Good evening. Welcome to Metro Focus. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jack Ford. As Republicans face off for congressional seats in the run up to the primaries on June 26, all eyes have been on the hotly contested race between Representative Dan Donovan and his predecessor, who's also a convicted felon, Michael Grimm. But there's another race that's grabbing headlines. On the Upper East Side of Manhattan, 34 year old Siraj Patel is challenging 25 year incumbent Carolyn Maloney for her seat in Congress. Patel, a former Obama staffer, a progressive activist, is running a very different type of campaign, targeting newer, younger voters in non-traditional ways with strategies that include unusual things, such as bar crawls and workout classes. Now, with over $1.1 million raised for his campaign, the question is, will he be successful? Well, here, to talk about all that, the candidate himself, Siraj Patel. Siraj, nice to have you here with us. Thanks for having me, Jack. Let, let me ask you a, a first question about getting into this race, and then I want to go talk a little bit about your background and the issues that you're focusing sure. on. Making a decision to enter a race for elected office is always complicated. Deciding to enter a race where you are going to challenge an incumbent, I would imagine is particularly complicated. Why did you feel that this was the right time for you now to challenge an incumbent? I think that I spent, like so many of us, much of the last two years figuring out how do we defend our democracy, uh, all the things we hold dear, our values, our free press, um, science, and frankly, my family's story. I'm a first generation American. Um, and so immigrants right now who are under attack every single day by this administration, how do we defend them and fight back the best? And I realized that over the long term, uh, you know, after marching and, and volunteering as an ACLU attorney at JFK uh, when the Muslim ban came down and all those things, I got tired of resisting that it is time to play offense, that we are as Democrats in this position because we for so long lost ourselves. We forgot to talk about the future. We forgot to lead from districts like this. I live here. I've been an East Village resident for 12 years. I came to law school at NYU and, um, you know, for a long time, much like everybody else, complacency was fine. Complacency from our congressperson was fine. The idea is let everybody else do it. I'm, I'm living my life here. Yeah, we got a blue seat, mm -hmm. votes the right way, issues the right press release, you know? It's not enough anymore. Jack, we have an obligation from New York to lead with bold ideas about the future because that's what elections ought to be about. Um, so I decided that, you know what? It's no longer okay to be apathetic and complacent. You know, 93% of this district doesn't even vote in a congressional that, primary. That, that's something I want to talk to you about in a yeah, second. Yeah, yeah. The notion of how do we get people to come out, no matter who they're going to vote for, how do we get them to come out yeah. and do their civic duty? Uh, you have a, a, a very interesting, compelling backstory. You mentioned uh, your parents come over here from India. You and I were talking about, yeah. I'm from the Jersey Shore. You were down there for a little while. Um, law school, uh, an entrepreneur. So you've got a compelling personal story. But you have to take on somebody who is established. Sure. So how do you then distinguish yourself? Well, there's several things here. So I don't believe that um, the Congresswoman has done enough with this seat uh, when it comes to fighting for the future and injecting new ideas and giving Democrats something to rally around. You see, I don't believe we can simply win by being anti-Trump. Mm -hmm. We've got to be pro something. And for decades, uh, this seat, this district, which encompasses not just the Upper East Side, but uh, Lower East Side, East Village, Midtown, Chelsea, Greenpoint, Williamsburg, Astoria, and Long Island City. It's a very diverse One of the most district. diverse and dynamic districts in America and in the world. And God, the world needs that dynamism right now. And in almost every facet of American life, Jack, finance, media, entertainment, technology, we lead. We lead from this district. And so without Republicans to really compete against, we have an obligation here to lead with ideas, with bold ideas about the future. And so well, as much as the Congresswoman has done in the past, the question should be, you know, why should she get a 13th term? What is she going to do in 2018, 19, and 20? But there's one candidate in this race who is engaging disaffected voters, youth, people of color, immigrants, Older voters, every single person in this talk, city. Talk about that. How are you trying to reach out for them? Because we, we, we've heard the lament about yeah. the younger people. They don't engage. They don't, uh, they don't but, cast ballots. And you mentioned how, how frighteningly low 
the number is for folks who actually participate in primary elections. So yeah. how are you trying to reach out and grab these people? Jack, I always say um, that politics is the only business that blames its customers for not buying an unappealing, un, unappealing product, huh. right? That's that an interesting, we always, an interesting view on yeah, it. You know, the political class, consultants, the establishment, they're always like, yeah, good luck, Suraj Patel. Young people won't vote. Minorities never turn out. Immigrants don't register. And instead of looking at themselves in the mirror and saying, why are we so bad at getting these people to do a simple free activity that takes 15 minutes mm. in June? Well, we've tapped into something remarkable. I had uh, 200 plus active volunteers out this last two weeks, uh, knocking on doors, making phone calls, meeting people at varied places, whether that's fitness classes or parks or yoga or whatever, and spreading this word. We've got 69 interns. 25 full-time employees. I'm 34 years old and I am the oldest person, second oldest person on this campaign. And it's crazy because we have been able to tap into something. And it's this, young people will vote. People of color will vote. You've just got to listen to them and engage them. You can't start with the premise that they're the ones in the wrong. You've got to start with the premise, we're doing something wrong. I wish we had more time to talk, <laughs> but we've been able to talk about a lot of things and hopefully we'll get you back in and we'll talk a little bit more down the road as you continue with this. So th thank you for spending some time with us um, and we appreciate your thoughts and, and what you're doing out there. Again, not picking a side, but just to get people engaged. That's right. Is very productive. So thanks for spending some time. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you so much, Jack. Thank you.